No, it's fucking. All right, here we go. It's Monday morning. Stand on up, Airman. Oh, We're gonna do ten jumping jacks. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. All right, here we go. Now we're it's Monday morning. All right. All right, here we go. <laughs> was I not up? Yeah, huh? Was I not up? It, it was up. <laughs> now I'm up. Yeah, you're up. Okay. You're ready to go. We're all ready. So we got to get get to get this <laughs> circulation going this morning. Get get moving here. Uh, so hope everybody had a great weekend, and I'm so glad you're here to join us. We're going to talk about the confusion of languages. <laughs> confusion of languages. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll, we're going to dig into that, and that's in um, Genesis chapter 11. So, um, beautiful day that we have here. It's going to get pretty hot, I think, today. <laughs> so, of course, that's, that's, what they're, that's what they're telling us. There. It's very nice now. Yeah, nice and comfortable right now. So, beautiful day. So, let's go to, we're going to dig into Genesis chapter 11. And Matt is going to kick us off. <clears throat> for the first uh, nine verses, then I get to read the names. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, so we're at the Tower of Babel. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words, and as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and... let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the, over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. <clears throat> Pick up in verse 10. These are the generations of Shem. When Shem was a hundred years old, he fathered... Apachshad, two years after the flood, and and Shem lived after he had fathered Apachshad five hundred years and had other sons and daughters. And Apachshad had lived thirty-five years. He fathered Sheila, and Apachshad lived after he fathered Sheila four hundred and three years and had other sons and daughters. When Sheila had lived thirty years, he fathered Eber and Sheila. Um, lived after he fathered Eber 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber had lived 34 years, he fathered Peleg. And Eber lived after he fathered Peleg 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg had lived 30 years, he fathered Ru. And Peleg lived after he fathered Ru 209 years and had other sons and daughters. When Ru had lived 32 years, he fathered Sarug. And Ru lived after he fathered Sarug 207 years and had other sons and daughters. When Sarug had lived 30 years, he fathered Nahor, and Sarug lived after he fathered Nahor 200 years and had other, other sons and daughters. When Nahor had lived 29 years, he fathered Terah, and Nahor lived after he fathered Terah 119 years and had other sons and daughters. When Terah had lived 70 years, he fathered Abram, Nahor, and Haran. <coughs> now, these are the generations of Terah. Terah fathered Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran fathered Lot. Haran died in the presence of his father Terah in the land of his kindred in Ur of the Chaldeans. And Abram and Nahor took wives. They name, the name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and Iscah. Now Sarai was barren, she had no child. Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. The days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. All right, let's uh, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious Father, we praise you and thank you for this uh, 
this day that you've blessed us with and for your word. Your word is truth. And so we pray, Lord God, we would see how this applies to our lives right now, uh, how we got to where we are right now in, in the world um, and the events of the world uh, and how the languages have come about. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So the first really big bit of con controversy is, is it Babel or Babel? Uh, yeah. Is it Babel or Babel? So, so I, I, I actually uh, I actually looked at that up, and according to Webster's, you can pronounce it either way. Oh. So we're so Webster's. according to Webster's, we can pronounce it either way, <laughs> either Babel or Babel. Okay, yeah. <laughs> right. So the Tower of Babel. What do you say? You know, Babel. You usually say Babel. I think I, think I usually. Sometimes <laughs> I. I don't know. It's just... We would just switch it right in the middle of the sentence. <laughs> I might. Ba Babel and Babel. I probably do. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So uh, it's interesting. So here it is. They're, they're constructing this tower in direct opposition to what uh, the Lord, uh, the command Lord had given Noah and his sons after they had gotten out of the ark to be fruitful and multiply and to fill the earth. Instead, they're like, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to cluster together and we're going to essentially rebel against God's command yet again and uh, make a name for ourselves we're not so that we're not dispersed over the face of the earth so they they, they kind of said that so the Lord uh, says it's interesting the way he puts this uh, behold verse 6 they are one people and they all have one language and this is only the beginning of what they will do and nothing that they pr purpose to do will now be impossible for them what he's getting at is <laughs> nothing will be impossible in the extent of the depravity that they will do, in the extent of their rebellion against God. Not that there's, uh, they can accomplish all kinds of great things. Well, you know, you know if you want to call like what Hitler did a great thing, you know, it would be great things in those terms, right? So mm -hmm. like things that we accomplish because of our depravity. And um, you think uh, a lot of times... Uh, advancements in technology or because of uh, of wars uh, seeing seeking out sometimes you have good uses for those things maybe after the war is over but is what we purpose to do many times is is against the will of God and against uh, what he has called us to do so uh, they bound together and so the Lord comes down and he confuses their language and then people groups start getting pushed out and the stronger ones will stay where they are the stronger clan or tribe or whatever it, uh, whatever it is the stronger people group and others will get pushed out and if you get pushed out far enough basically you're only doing subsistence living at that point I mean think of it this way if everything that we have in this society was suddenly taken away from us your house, your cars, your, uh, you know, all of the stuff that we have. How many of us know how to really build almost build anything? Do you know how to make steel from from scratch? You yeah. had no knowledge of everything was wiped out. You, and you had, <laughs> do you know, how, do you know how to make a rifle? Do you know how to make, do you even know how to make a bow and arrow? <laughs> like, I, I no. would struggle like I would I, I have a memory of how these things looked and stuff and I might be able to figure out certain things but boy though my main concern would be survival right and you're really subsiding a subsistence living you're really uh, you know just trying to keep yourself alive mm -hmm. so very quickly we can kind of go back to the uh, stone age if you will I mean, I'd probably be making some tools out of stone initially mm -hmm. to just to try to survive. So if you've got everything wiped out. Now, there's other people that really still know how to build things. But I'd say the vast majority of Americans don't know how to build too many things. If everything was taken away, like, you know, forging tools, uh, other kinds of stuff. It's pretty, pretty amazing. So these people weren't dumb. None of the people in the ancient world were dumb. They're very smart. Uh, they're just working with what they have. We have an accumulation of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Another interesting thing I was kind of thinking about is uh, we had the Tower of, of Babel and the confusion of the languages. 
And now there's a kind of a drawing together of the languages again, especially under the through the internet mm -hmm. and uh, through English being kind of the dominant business mm -hmm. language of the world. And that, you know, some people think, oh, that's a great thing. But also, I, I'm not sure if it's going to be a great thing with our unified rebellion against God. It seems like we kind of use these things in a, in a wrong way. So you, you kind of think of that, that Internet is almost uh, undoing this diversity of languages. Hmm. Another, another point is there's about 7,000 languages in the world, but there's only about... 75 to 100 families of languages so root you know the roots of the languages yeah uh and so based on the analysis of how many people were were there different people groups that formed out of that that falls right in the ballpark of the 75 to 100 uh people groups so there might have only been 75 or 100 languages family languages at the time of the dispersal at the time of the Tower of Babel. And here's an interesting thing. So then, why do we have so many languages now? Like, even way more than, than that. Well, let's just look at our own English language. Uh, so, late, late modern English, 1700s, Our Father Who Art in Heaven, right? Or Our Father Who Is in Heaven. That would be another way. Uh, early modern English, it would be Our Father Which Art in Heaven, Middle English, 1100 to 1500, our father that art in Hunis. You kind of understand it, yeah, right? Sort of. And then we go Old English, AD 1000. So that's only, you know, 1000, uh, you, you know, a little over a thousand years ago. Yeah. A thousand years ago. It would be father un in art un hadem in Hufenum. <laughs> now we're having trouble communicating. Right. That's how quickly languages can change. That's just English. That's old English. We. I don't know if you, uh, Beowulf is, uh, I think, an ancient uh, old English uh, tale. If you try to read that in the or original, it's like you can't read it. Hmm. Uh, so languages can change very rapidly. So. Um, that's how the languages can diver diversify very quickly over a period of time. Uh, also, the people groups um, that they had and the names of the descendants is kind of interesting. Uh, so, our uh, descendant of Noah was Aram. That's where Aramaic and Arameans come from. Uh, Cush is Cush. Madai is the Medes. Ashkenaz uh, is still the Hebrew name for Germany. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Gomer, uh, Galatia, Gaul, Galatia. Gomer, and then um, here's another one. Ca Canaan, that's still Ca that was still Canaan. Elam, the Elamites, Asher, Assyria. Eber, that's the root for Hebrew, the Hebrews. Uh, Tarshish, Taurus, Tarsus, and Taurus and so so forth so they have different names here that have kind of even come down to us uh through the years so kind of interesting piece of information on that mm -hmm. so then we got you know shem then they hone in on shem and the reason they're honing in on shem is that's the line of jesus right so the, ultimately this is where mm -hmm. jesus will come from and we come up to um terah Terah, Terah is is uh, very important because he's the father of Abram, which then will become, God will rename him Abraham, and we're going to see the call of Abram in the next chapter. So that's just, this is where it's kind of going through. It's very, very important, um, you know, the genealogy. And you also see uh, the origin of Lot, uh, so you, ha you have Abram and you have Lot. Um, and so then we, the, the, the Lot will factor into the account later on here in Genesis as well. Mm -hmm. So rather uh, kind of a neat few things in here. Um, oh, it's another little interesting piece of trivia. Uh, 
a lot of ancient civilizations have an account of a confusion of languages happening in a tower. So they kind of took this uh, account and took the memory of that to wherever they were pushed out. And then a lot of places tried to build a tower <laughs> in a similar fashion. So interesting uh, that these kind of things. There's also uh, interesting a lot of ancient cultures have some sort of flood account that's going on. Mm -hmm. It's always twisted and, and distorted from the biblical account. But some sort of flood account is there. Some sort of account in the ancient ancient civilizations about dispersion of languages um, and, and tower factoring into that. So they took a memory of these things as, as it went out. Um, some of the people groups um, were pushed off up into the north, west, and the northeast, what would be modern-day Russia and modern-day Europe. And this is a time when uh, Ice Age is going on and, and uh, the people are just living in, some of them are living in caves. Uh, so very quickly, if all of our stuff was taken away from us, I, I don't know how to build that much. Maybe you'd do better than me. No, I don't know. I don't do you know how so. to build stuff from, you know? <laughs> no, <laughs> from, from no I'd be in trouble. <laughs> We'd be Stone Age. Yeah. Real, like really quick. Right. It's kind of hard to think of that in terms. Like you'd have to wipe out all the knowledge that we have. Like the computers, internet, electricity, everything is gone. And now you have to survive. And, and, and furthermore, okay, so if that happened right now, we'd have a little time to prepare for what? For winter. Mm-hmm. We could probably survive the rest of the summer by, I don't know, scrounging around stuff and things like that. <clears throat> but everything's taken away, all your shelter and everything else. You have a few months now to prepare for winter. <laughs> uh, winter here? <laughs> winter. Yeah. Uh, Would you survive? Uh, That's the question. <laughs> a week. <laughs> Maybe. First cold front comes through and yeah. you're in big trouble. <laughs> no. Yeah. So... Nobody, you can't just buy a winter coat somewhere. You have to make your own clothes. You got to do all everything. Right. In there. You might be able to get a deer. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no. So, anyway, anything else on this? It's kind of kind of interesting account. Yeah, it just makes me think about um, trying to build or do things in our life on our own rather than with God. And, and what are the consequences for that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Obviously, this is kind of the lesson, but you see it play out in different ways, like different situations. So, um, we're we're still doing that, right? This exact same thing, uh, except for most of the the history, except for recently, the that diversity of of languages has kind of kept us apart in the amount of rebellion we can do. Mm -hmm. So, rebellions here, rebellions there, pockets this. Now it seems like there's chance for more worldwide rebellion against God, mm -hmm. which I think I see the direction it's heading. Uh, a lot of times we what we export from here is a total rebellion against God. What do we export in our movies? What do we export in our in our culture? It's like the worst of it that gets exported to the world, and so it becomes worldwide. I was amazed when I went over to Africa that there was. Uh, a lot of people were walking around. They, they had to walk for miles to get water, but they had a cell phone in their hand. <laughs> like, a, that, amazing how small the world has become now. Yeah. In there. So let's let's close with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for your word. Your word is truth, and we pray, Lord God, that as uh, missionaries work and Bible translators work to bring your word um, in native people's languages that your word will continue to go out and that we remember that at Pentecost everybody could hear uh, the disciples praising you in their own native tongue and so that's the undoing of the Tower of Babel uh, what you did at Pentecost in the birth of the church and we praise you and thank you for that in Jesus mighty name Amen. Amen. Have a great day.